Hello and welcome to my first timeless video. This is a brand new format on Arena that I'm quite excited about. And every single card on Arena is legal. There's no banned list. There's only a small restricted list that includes Channel, Tibalt's Trickery and a Demonic Tutor. And we're actually playing one copy of Demonic Tutor in this deck since we're playing a Tainted Pact combo, a deck some of you may already be familiar with. The combo is very simple. We're hoping to find Thassa's Oracle and Tainted Pact. And then if we have four mana, we can just cast both to instant win the game, since Tainted Pact can essentially exile our entire library, and then we can play Thassa's Oracle with an empty library to instantly win the game. Even if they remove Oracle in response, we don't need any blue devotion. As long as our library is empty, we'll still win. Now, of course, we can also use Tainted Pact to find specific cards in our deck, but for the most part, this is a combo enabler alongside Thassa's Oracle. Now, one interesting quirk about Tainted Pact, if we wanted to exile our entire library, we need to make sure that our entire library consists of one-offs, because otherwise we risk revealing the same card twice and then the combo is going to fizzle out basically. So that's why we only have two copies of Tainted Pact since if we're casting one there's not going to be two in the deck and then two copies of Thassa's Oracle because we want to have a higher chance of drawing one and if we're casting Tainted Pact presumably we already have a Thassa's Oracle in hand so there's no risk of the combo fizzling there either. And then we can also potentially get back Thassa's Oracle from the graveyard if it maybe gets discarded thanks to Lurus, our companion which I found to be better than including some more expensive cards in the deck since the format is pretty fast and low to the ground anyways so we don't want to spend too much time casting expensive spells when there's so many cheap counter spells available so that's the combo then of course our deck needs to be all singletons including the mana base so that's why the mana base may seem a little bit strange at first glance because we have a singleton mana base field of the dead also becomes an appealing option in case the games drag out this can give us an alternate win condition in case thassa's oracle doesn't pan out we can just win with an army of zombie tokens and then with cans of dark here of course that also introduced the fetch lands and we're playing four of the new fetch lands bloodstained mire flooded strand polluted delta and wooded foothills and the can fetch up our shock lands such as watery grave steam vents and blood crypt and we can also get some of our basic lands and we've got one basic island and one snow covered island which has a different name from a regular island so it doesn't interfere with our tainted pact and then we've got one of each swamp as well don't really need mountain since our red splash is quite limited especially in the main deck as you can see and one of the reasons to have all these basics is to play around an opposing blood moon turning your non-basics into mountains so having a basic mountain doesn't really help us there just need to make sure we have our basic island and swamp covered and then a fabled passage an extra fetch land which can also be helpful in enabling a brainstorm another powerful new tool in this format which is going to see a lot of play we get to draw three cards and then put two cards from our hand on top of our library in any order so the idea with brainstorm is that you cast it and then put some useless cards back on top and then sacrifice a fetch land to shuffle so you get rid of those cards that you didn't really want in the first place so that turns brainstorm into a very powerful one mana card draw effect so i've split up the deck into a few different categories we've got our small miscellaneous section we've got discard spells and removal then we've got a section dedicated to counter spells and then we've got our cantrips and card draw effects and of course finally the combo and our lanes so starting with the miscellaneous section we're playing mishra's bauble as a cheap card draw effect that will basically replace itself while giving us a tiny bit of information also quite synergistic with fetch lanes you can play mishra's bauble target yourself if there's a card on top you want to draw then don't sacrifice your fetch land if there's a card you don't want to draw then you can fetch it away and hopefully draw something better and then Mishra's Bauble is also very synergistic with Lurus as we can get it back from the graveyard for free turn after turn and draw an extra card so that can also be nice in those grindier matchups then a Dark Ritual is actually not at its best in this deck since we're not trying to cast a 3-drop on turn 1 and we're not really a Storm combo deck either but it's still fun to play with and can potentially make it easier to cast our Demonic Tutor and Tainted Pact alongside other spells so I'm still trying it out here but could easily be cut then a Soul Guide Lantern gives us a bit of main deck graveyard hate, and similar to Mishra's Bobble, also very nice to get back with Lurus. Then we've got Snapcaster Mage as another 2-drop that we can recur with Lurus, letting us replay instants and sorceries from the graveyard. And when we've got such powerful cards to choose from, of course, Snapcaster goes up in value. And then our one-off Restricted Demonic Tutor, which feels pretty nice, can help us find Thassa's Oracle and Tainted Pact. If we already have the combo, we can maybe get a counter spell to protect the combo, including the free Pact of Negation. While Force of Will isn't legal in the format, Pact of Negation can still help protect the combo and make sure you can can go off through one piece of interaction and then we don't really care about the drawback if we're going to win before we need to pay five 
And then taking a look at our discard and removal section, we've got Duress, Thoughtseize and Inquisition of Kozilek to take away opposing counter spells for the most part. And then our removal includes Fatal Push, can now pretty easily enable Revolt thanks to our fetch lanes. And then we've got a Lightning Bolt and Unholy Heat, one of the advantages of splashing a bit of red. And these can also go after Planeswalkers, so we can deal with maybe a Teferi and an Oko. And some of our two mana removal spells can also deal with Planeswalkers, as you'll see. Better Triumph need to pay three life or discard a card. Eliminate can still deal with those three mana walkers. And Shieldred's Edict can also make them sacrifice a Planeswalker or a creature. So these are also quite versatile. And then our counter spells include Pact of Negation. Spell Peers can counter any non-creature spell unless the opponent pays 2, so it can also deal with enchantments and planeswalkers again. Sensor, unless they pay 1, can be cycled as well. And then a change the equation I also like in the main deck. It's quite versatile as it can counter some expensive green cards like Oko, Wilderness Reclamation, maybe even Primeval Titan if people are trying Field of the Dead ramp strategies, and then it can also still hit cheaper spells. And then Memory Lapse, another all-purpose counter spell, Negate to counter non-creature spells, Counterspell, of course, another staple in any blue deck, and Mystical Dispute also seems good enough to include in the main deck, since there's going to be a lot of blue spells, including some of the Planeswalkers like Teferi and Oko. And then our Cantrip and Card Draw section includes Brainstorm, we've got Consider, Opt and Sleight of Hand, then at 2 mana Impulse, and Seek New Knowledge is the only alchemy card I'm playing in the main deck, so alchemy cards are legal in this format, but before you panic, so far from all the opponents I've faced, I haven't encountered a single alchemy card, and I don't expect that to change too much going forward, but this is just a nice cantrip in this deck, as we can also potentially put a Thassa's Oracle on the bottom of our deck, so we're guaranteed to find one when we go for Tainted Pact, and then we can just cast a Thassa's Oracle to win the game, so that's also quite synergistic. And then Expressive Iteration, another advantage of splashing a bit of red as an excellent card draw spell. And then of course we've got the Delve spells, Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time also heavily benefit from all these fetch lands filling our graveyard, so we can cheaply cast them. Especially Dig Through Time can be very useful if we're just looking for one specific card. And then of course we've got our combo pieces, our one-off mana base. And then even though we will be playing this in best of one today to get a larger sample size of matchups, I've also included a sample sideboard, if you will, cards you can potentially look at for best of three, including some cheap counter spells such as Dispel and Miscast to counter opposing instants and sorceries. We've got Swan Song, which can also hit enchantments potentially. So these are just more cheap counter spells to counter opposing counters for the most part. And then a Test of Talents can also be very effective in the mirror match, countering a Tainted Pact. Then the Lithomantic Barrage can maybe take out a Teferi or other blue and white creatures. Collective Brutality can be great against a Burn aggro deck, where we can take out a creature, escalate it, and then also drain for two, maybe take away a Burn spell. Then Bind to Secrecy is basically another Negate, so another Alchemy card here. And then a Blood Chief's Thirst and Cutdown are more one-mana removal spells. We've got a Noxious Grasp, which can also take out some of the Planeswalkers like Oko and Teferi. Molten Impact, another pretty effective alchemy card when facing creature decks. Molten Collapse can also hit creatures and Planeswalkers alike, and we can also maybe enable the Descend to take out a cheap non-creature non-land permanent with mana value 1 or less. And finally Prismari Command, in case we need to deal with some artifacts, while also giving us a draw and discard effect, and maybe making a treasure token. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, our hand's fine. Nothing exciting, but a good amount of interaction. Cantrip, a counter spell. And there's a Tainted Pact, so that's better. Get our blue mana online. It's our opponent's on what appears to be blue-white control. So we'll keep up Mystical Dispute to maybe counter a Teferi if that shows up. And if not, we can consider end of turn. Opponent's fetching before casting Brainstorm is strange. Usually want to wait to fetch afterwards. And then a Slide of Hand we don't really need. An extra blue source would actually be useful. But for now I gotta keep up Mystical Dispute. There's the fairy. And 
then seek new knowledge we can main phase here since uh, we know fatal push is not going to be particularly great in the matchup all right we're shields down if our opponents go to teferi they can resolve it now but eliminate can be an answer to it So now we've got double blue, a couple cards in graveyard, so dig through time is becoming an option too now. But we'll pass. Opponent tapping out for deluge, so let them resolve the deluge, and then we'll resolve dig through time. And then we've got eliminate for Teferi, and then pact of negation to try and protect our combo from a counterspell. And found Thassa's Oracle. I guess another Tainted Pact is fine. Do we need an extra land? Not really. Okay. There's the Fairy. It's gonna draw. Well, now we can also Bolter and Holy Heat. Seems like a better solution. Opponent fights over it. So now we could eliminate and then end of turn, Tainted Pact, untap, try and win with Oracle and Pact of Negation backup. Yeah, that seems fine. Kind of depends if her opponent taps out again. Right, opponent lets this one go. And uh, we want to dig pretty deep. If I leave myself with one card in library draw it for turn, play Oracle, and then have Pact of Negation backup. I mean, ideally we would pick up another counter spell. Thoughtseize could also be somewhat useful here. Have we exiled the Duress yet? We have not. So I guess we can keep going and try and hit a Duress instead. Because otherwise I'm going to have a bunch of leftover mana that I'm not really using. Snapcaster is also decent. Dark Ritual doesn't do much. So there's Duress, 18 cards left. So we could untap Duress and then still Oracle plus Tainted Pact with Pact of Negation backup. I think that's good. So we'll start here. So we can beat two counter spells basically. Opponent with a memory lapse. Okay, so I'll cast Oracle and then in response Tainted Pact. And then still have a Pact of Negation. Source to plowshares doesn't matter since we're gonna have an empty library. So we're winning as it stands, and we still have a pact of negation in hand.
And there we have it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn 2 can uh, end of turn seek new knowledge while keeping up counter spell. Opponent to red green. This could be a Blood Moon deck, but we can um, always fetch a basic swamp with Bloodstain Mire. So for now, I'll play the Catacomb. This opponent on Teamer. Okay, found our Tainted Pact. Probably don't want both Dig Through Time and Treasure Cruise. Which do we prefer? The instant speed on Dig Through Time could be important. So I'll get rid of the Treasure Cruise. The double blue on Dig Through Time could be rough in the face of a Blood Moon, but given the opponent's mana, Blood Moon doesn't seem super likely. And we found a Swamp as well. So I'll hang on to the Bloodstay Mire as a potential shuffle effect. And then I could already tutor for Thassa's Oracle. And then next turn win the game. We have Dispute Backup to counter an opposing counter spell. So I don't hate it. Opponent lets it resolve, get Oracle. And our opponent's going for a Cultivation, so this is maybe a Transmogrify that's incoming. Yep. Well, let's see what our opponent cheats into play. Primeval Titan. Alright, that's fine. So our opponent's dead next turn. So Field of the Dead, Creativity, Transmogrify deck. Okay, so a few ways we can do this, including playing Thassa's Oracle and then responding to the trigger with Tainted Pact so our opponent knows that they're dead. That's kind of a courtesy. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Opponent also playing with Lurus, and our hand seems totally fine. Can keep a Fatal Push or just play Tapped Watery Grave for now. If our opponent goes turn 1 Ragavan, I might regret not keeping up Fatal Push. Because now we have to decide between taking out Ragavan or keeping up Interaction. But uh, that's fine, I'll just take it out now. And then now we can cast our cantrip end of turn. So our opponent could be on kind of a Grixis mid-range deck. If they're playing Spire Bluff, they're unlikely to be on Death Shadow. So end of turn we can impulse. And find Expressive Iteration or Demonic Tutor. Well, they're both quite good. We do want to hit more land drops as well. Tutor can get Oracle to set up the combo. So it might just be Tutor that might get countered is a problem. Although I guess our opponent would also want to counter an Iteration. Yeah, I'll still go for Tutor. And we found Oracle. Okay, so now we don't really care if Tutor gets countered. If it resolves, what do we get? A land is an option. Alright, opponent counterspells, that's fine. So if our opponent taps out and we draw an untapped land, we can just win next turn. They could also be on a packed combo, of course. So far, I think it's all singletons. Found another packed. It's a little awkward. Really just need a land. Yeah, I guess we'll pass. Can also pack to end of turn. Opponent with a brainstorm that resolves. And 
and are gonna fetch. Shuffle away those cards they don't want. Right, double steam vents means no tainted pact. Channeler we can take out with unholy heat. Yeah, that's fine. And then we'll respond. Opponent's gonna brainstorm a response. Don't think we need to fight over the brainstorm, although it's not a bad thing just to use up my mana here. Change the equation. Because we know our opponent has the fetch line, so this brainstorm is actually pretty good. And then since we're stuck on three lanes, if we do get the opportunity to taint it Pact for value, I might want to get a Pact of Negation, which we can still cast alongside Oracle and Tainted Pact. Found a land, although it's a tapped one. That's okay. So getting an extra blue source could help just so we can oracle and counter spell so yeah going for tainted pact end of turn is a little sketchy if we go down to zero cards now a bowmasters i don't think we care about so if i tainted pact in the opponent's end step assuming it resolves i could go down to one card draw it for a turn play Oracle, but then I don't have the second blue for Counterspell. So instead I could either Pact for a Pact of Negation, and then we can set up the combo again next turn with Pact Backup. But we'll see what they do. Ragavan with Dash. That's not gonna mess up my combo too badly, since we have all the pieces in hand. I suppose I could Pact in case they hit a counter spell of Ragavan, and I could hit a removal spell, Lightning Bolt still in it. And if not, I guess we want to find our Pact of Negation and not have Ragavan get rid of it. So I don't want Tap Lands. Does Dark Ritual help? I don't think so. So Blue Land isn't bad but still doesn't let me combo with Counterspell Backup. So I think we're digging for Pact of Negation. Another Oracle goes by. If our opponent has a discard spell left in hand, I could regret this, although there's always Lurus. So there's a Lightning Bolt, we could Bolt Ragavan now if we'd like, but I think we've got different plans. Still quite a few cards remaining. There's our Pact. Put that in hand. And a bobble's fine. So our opponent's got one card left. They're gonna draw with bobbles, so they'll have two. So if they have two interactive spells that they can both cast, that could be bad. If not, we should have it. And our opponent just puts a Lurus in hand, plays a land. So, yeah, with only one interactive card they can cast, we should have the combo. So, play Oracle, back in response. Make sure to be full control here so we can respond to the trigger.
Well, we may not have Force of Will on Arena, but Pact of Negation is uh, not a bad replacement when we're trying to combo in one turn. And there we have it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, our hands got a lot of interaction. No combo pieces, no card draw. Could still try it, and see how a longer game plays out. But it's possible we should mulligan more aggressively, opponent on elves. Okay, for now, bolt a bird, or in this case maybe push the elf. If they're on elves, bolt can also deal with a larger creature without needing revolt even though we've got the Wooded Foothills here. And I might play the Watery Grave. Is your opponent on a Natural Order type of deck? Bunch more Elves. So we can Inquisition, and then still opt, or maybe Lightning Bolt if we want to fetch. Alright, Court of Calling and Elite. So, Court of Calling, right now, I guess they could get a 2-drop next turn. The Elite might be more annoying, just as kind of the pressure, even though we've got a Bolt. And then we can just Bolt whatever they get with Cord, which could be another Elite, I suppose. But if they get an Archdruid, we can... Uh, Deal with that pretty easily. They might just go for an Elvish Warmaster. Or a Visionary. So this actually worked out better for us, since now we can take it out without the opponent having a leftover token. Flooding out a little bit. Could still be in trouble if her opponent casts a natural order. Another mystic. So just a bunch of 1 1s hitting us. But uh, yeah, I have to decide if I want to keep up disputes or put Lurus in hand so we can play a blocker next turn. And then next turn I'll have negate backup as well. Problem is with dispute is we won't be able to counter anything significant unless they tap out. So I think going for lures makes sense. And then I can also fetch here and get a tapped shock land. So lures in hand. We can fetch end of turn and get... We already have watery grave. So maybe a blood crypt here. Keeping Flutter's trying to get another island. Our opponent might have drawn a cord if they're pausing here. So I guess I can just take my draw step then. Although it does mean having to take more damage of Wooded Foothills. So I can negate a Cord of Calling since they were afraid of uh, tapping out there. Yeah, I think the plan now is just to play Lurus, and then keep up Negate, and then next turn we can maybe Treasure Cruise. Treasure Cruise an incentive to get my fetch lands in the graveyard. And then Lurus can block the 1-1s. One -ones. That resolved. So if they go for an end of turn Court of Calling or Company, we can Negate. Uh, Court of Calling for one, so they're gonna get Olasaurus Shepherd. So we don't want that to come into play. And then Steam Vents might be better now, actually. Opponent passes. So fetch for an island, cast a cheap treasure cruise. Could also consider first. Field of the Dead. 
I guess isn't the worst here, although I don't imagine we're going to beat the elf deck by making a couple zombies. So fetch for an island. Already have snow covered island. Maybe should have fetched before casting the consider just in case. And then a one mana cruise. Leaving in the graveyard. Probably something like uh, negate and lightning bolts. In case we find a Snapcaster Mage. Okay. Got a couple counter spells. Does Lurus want to attack? Not really. If we find a bobble or lantern, we can put Lurus to good use. So now maybe memory lamps, frailies. And then next turn we can change the equation it. Probably fine to cycle sensor. Alright, Demonic Tutor, Edict. So, I could tutor now. But there's two different combo pieces we need to choose from. And alright, our opponent has seen enough. They feel like they're too far behind. Which is fair. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is not great. We've got a Duress for a bit of interaction. Brainstorm is missing a fetch land. Although Impulse could maybe find one. But uh, yeah, it's also not a disaster. So we'll see how this works out up against the red aggro. Alright, so we don't have much time to waste here. Do we want to spell pierce? Your opponent's likely casting a creature next turn, so can duress. Still don't want to brainstorm on turn one. Eidolon's going to be a problem for now. I guess take the discharge. Yeah, Eidolon's going to punish us for casting a bunch of cantrips. Opponent goes for Swiss Spear instead. And a play with fire. Yeah, Mono Red I think is going to be a tough matchup. Unless we can just combo on turn 4 with a bit of interaction. But at least we didn't have to face an Eidolon on turn 2. So now what? I can... Keep up my mana, cast an Impulse, or we can opt and Brainstorm, starting with Brainstorm, so we can scry to the bottom. So we get some of the cantrips out of the way, so we don't take damage twice. And of course we can do everything at instant speed. So they may not want to play Eidolon. So we're down to 10. And there's Eidolon. So we can brainstorm. Fatal push an answer to the Eidolon. And then steam vents I don't need. So we can put the steam vents on top and then um, scry to the bottom with opt basically. Okay, so now Fatal Push plus Impulse. And another Eidolon. Alright, so I think that means we're just dead here since we won't have enough life to set up the combo. Iteration and consider. Yeah, those aren't gonna help. Yeah, Eidolon's pretty good against our combo variant. And 
And yeah, we're just locked out here. All right, GG's. I'll see what iteration finds. And go out on our own terms. Memory lapse and bobble. So we could have uh, put memory lapse in hands, played the bobble right now. And that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is missing our combo pieces, and we only have an opt for a card draw. Our interaction's not bad. Spell Pierce and Edict. And then once we do find the combo, we've got a pack to protect it. So this one's borderline on the play. Yeah, I guess we can try it. Opponent with a flooded strand. I'm getting a tap steam vents. And there's Oracle, so just missing our tainted pack now. And uh, can play Wooded Foothills to keep up Edict. Could just play a tapped Blood Crypt as well. Save ourselves a bit of damage. Although the fetch line could be useful if we find a brainstorm. So I'm not in a hurry to fetch. I guess we can just play it and not fetch yet. Opponent also Grixis and goes for a Demonic Tutor. Well, I think it's fine to spell Pierce. Just so I don't have to worry about what card they might get, which could be a creature, but opponent might also be on a Tainted Pact combo. Don't want them getting a discard spell either. Consider. Okay, so... Good main phase, consider. Don't need Dark Ritual. And find our own tutor, which I can now try to resolve. And get Tainted Pact. And then next turn we could try to combo with an untapped land. Got a negate. Probably just passing now with negate up as opposed to uh, putting a Lurus in hand. Put on brainstorms. That's fine. Keep the negate for a discard spell. Bobble's fine. So now if we find an untapped lands, we don't have to worry about counter spells. And there we go. Alright, so we can go for the combo with Pact of Negation back up too. resolves. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, we've got a keepable hand facing Alurus as companion here. If it's a mirror match, then Pact of Negation to protect the combo is nice, but looks like a more aggressive deck instead. Okay, 
tapped Watery Grave versus Fetch uh, tapped Steam Vents. We've got the Dark Slick Shores to eliminate on turn two. So maybe getting the red mana is fine, even though we use up our fetch land. Also want to fill the graveyard for dig through time. Small consideration for fetching main phase to play around Stifle, although I haven't seen anyone play that yet. Opponent's also going to fetch. Getting an overgrown tomb, so opponent's got some multiple callers here. So I can pass with change the equation, eliminate available. If they cast something in a turn, I might eliminate. Can take the hit from channeler. Alright, now we can eliminate. And our opponent's got a memory lapse in response. So this could be kind of a five-color domain aggro deck with tribal flames to close out the game. Maybe a territorial kavu. Yeah, I guess we'll just go tapped watery grave and then basically do the same. Opponent fetches. If I eliminate now and they tap out for Kavu, that would be pretty bad. So I want to keep up my counter spell. Iteration. Yeah, that's good, but we'll let it resolve. Finds a bobble. Trigger channeler. So I'm not too worried about our opponent having too much interaction for our combo. They're more of an aggro deck. I'm gonna take three so we can keep up change the equation. And then eliminate end of turn. This might be another memory lapse, although now we can take out Chandler and then still keep up change the equation. Gets a tab breeding pool and sacks bobble. Okay. So our opponent's still missing white mana for the full domain. And uh, yeah, I'll still keep up change the equation. Next turn we can put Lurus in hand. Another iteration. All right, now that we have fatal push, I think we counter. Holy Heat's more removal. So we could already dig through time. I think I'll go for Lurus, keep up some removal. And then next turn we can maybe dig. Opponents cycling a Lorian Revealed. And another iteration will resolve. Opponents down to 9 from all these fetch lands and shock lands. And wow, opponent concedes. They must have drawn a few too many lands along the way. And uh, yeah, we had a dig through time we could try and resolve. And then if we find our combo pieces, we've got packed as backup. But outside of memory lapse, it didn't seem like they had a ton of counter spells. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with what looks like. A keepable hand. Turn one Delver, so blue-red. So we can start with Bobble, Bobble the opponents. See if they're gonna transform Delver or not. They're not. In that case, I'm just gonna slide of hand. And Dispute versus a land. I will need more mana, even though Dispute could be a way to counter an opposing counterspell. Opponent's going to resolve another Delver, most likely. 
So I'll just get to land. Edict can answer one of them. And then Triumph maybe deal with the second. Well, with the Dark Ritual, I could cast both removal spells already. Might want to save it to set up a big treasure cruise. And then for now, Shieldred's Edict. If I main phase it, we could run into Spell Pierce. If I let them untap, they could have a two mana counter. So I think we Edict now. Still no transformation, luckily. And a channeler is next. Okay, so three cards in graveyard. Can make it four with foothills. And then with dark ritual, we could power up a treasure cruise. Can I keep up memory lapse as well for an opposing counter spell is a question. Maybe I'm better off waiting a turn and just taking out the channeler. And then next turn we can go for it. Yeah, let's just maybe pass. Don't want a better triumph into two mana anyways. Now I could do it before opponent draws into another counter, of course. But we'll see what the Delver reveals. A Lorien revealed. So now... The Aberration might be the bigger threat. Opponent's Island Cycling. Puts a Sorcerer in the Graveyard for Channeler. Could also take the hit. In case your opponent plays another creature, we can Memory Lapse it. If not, we can End of Turn Bitter Triumph. That's reasonable. Bitter Triumph, either losing 3 life or discarding is also a decision. Could see discarding a land. So maybe how about we just uh, Bitter Triumph now? Nah, I think I should keep up Memory Lapse. Although they didn't seem to have many threats last turn. And we know they didn't draw into one. Let's just do this now. And then discarding a card also helps with Treasure Cruise. Opponent had the Counterspell, good to know. Can fetch a tap land here. But now Channeler is powered up. So that was a reason to take the damage first. Fall to 9. Get a, a red source as well. And a brainstorm side I just fetched. So, can Treasure Cruise maybe after casting a Dark Ritual? Hoping we can make use of the mana. Or we can just Treasure Cruise. And then I'll have to pay two mana for it. I think this is kind of a turn where we need to make something happen since we could just be dead to a bolt otherwise. Yeah, we can Ritual. I'm not going to play my land yet in case we find another fetch land for the Brainstorm. Cruise. Don't think the game's gonna go long enough for Lurus plus Bobble to be a thing. Okay, so now we can still brainstorm and eliminate. So let's eliminate the channeler. And brainstorm. And then we found Oracle. Can still cast a duress. And then we can fetch with Fable Passage to save on life. Getting another island. Snow covered one. And take their treasure cruise. So they still have Snapcaster on Counterspell available, which is pretty good here.
one's just gonna go for Snapcaster Treasure Cruise, it seems. Well, we could just draw a Tainted Pactum with the game. Otherwise, we still maybe have two turns. Although them drawing a Burn Spell is also somewhat likely. Found a Sulfur Falls, so I can put Lurus in hand, keep up a Memory Lapse, but that's not going to help me since uh, Pono can just fly over for the last points. Playing Oracle as a blocker for Snapcaster, not ideal, because then we can't win with uh, Tainted Pact. So I think my only hope is to just play a land pass, go down to one, and then top deck Tainted Pact for the win. I guess it doesn't hurt to put Lurus in hand. Alright, opponent had a bolt end of turn, so yeah, I can memory lapse it, but they'll just redraw it for turn. So yeah, that's game over, sadly. GG's. Couldn't find our Sainted Pact in time. On to the next one. And the Holy Heat wouldn't have been super relevant other than taking out Lurus. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and um, don't have any combo pieces. We've got a little bit of removal, some cantrip effects. Not a great hand. Also no black mana for eliminate. This is better. Probably ditch the eliminate, keep dispute. Since we're going to be in trouble against a creature aggro deck regardless, so might as well keep the counter spell. And if our opponent's not playing a companion, creature aggro is a little bit less likely. Triome could be a wilderness reclamation deck. So I'll keep up spell pierce and dispute. Can uh, also bobble myself, decide if I want to fetch with Bloodstained Mire. Treasure Cruise looks good, so I don't want to fetch that away. Could have still played the Bloodstained Mire just with the plan of not fetching right away. Temple Garden now points towards maybe a Domain deck that could have cards like Leyline Binding. Gross Peril does make my Spell Pierce worse, and we still have a Mystical Dispute if they tap out for a Planeswalker. So I don't hate just Spell Piercing aggressively, also because we want to fill the Graveyard for Treasure Cruise. And now they might not expect a Mystical Dispute, although it's not like Uro is all that relevant. So it's aggressively disputing just for Treasure Cruise, pretty much. I think they can keep their Uro. Mainly want to keep Dispute for Teferi, or maybe an Oko. And then next turn we can also 3-mana Dispute to counter Wilderness Reclamation. Some fine fetching end of turn now. And getting a Watery Grave. And there's Omnath, that's worth countering. And a Field of the Dead. Alright, hopefully the game doesn't go long enough for that to matter. And uh, Soul Guide Lantern, a decent answer to Uro. So I guess that means change the equation goes, even though it could counter some relevant spells. Could also get rid of a land, although that feels a little greedy. Four cards in Graveyard. Close call. And let's just get rid of the change the equation here. And then a fetch land also helps with Treasure Cruise. So we can Lantern, Sack Lantern, and then still Treasure Cruise.
Could also keep Lantern in the graveyard for Lurus. And I guess now that we found Counterspell, I'll just play Land and Pass. Yeah, the ferry is a bit of a problem. Their opponent can almost make zombies with field. Another Teferi. Alright. It doesn't stop our combo, it just makes it awkward to use our counter spells. Like our Pact of Negation. So a couple of options. But um I think we fetch treasure cruise and then could potentially find an oracle and just win the game. So we'll leave Soul Guide in there. Or I guess Baubles, maybe even better. And there's Oracle, so now I have to taint it packed first since we can't taint it packed at instant speed. And just go until we're with an empty library, or I guess in this case two cards remaining is still enough, since we have two Devotion. And I don't think our opponent has a Pact of Negation in hand. So this game worked out nicely. Treasure Cruise is one hell of a card. Yeah, well, it's the opponent's Teferi that's keeping them in the game. Otherwise, I would have played Oracle and responded to the trigger with Tainted Pact, saving everyone a lot of time. So they only have themselves to blame. We're almost there. Alright, two cards left. I guess this is fine. Play Oracle. And win the game. Alright, so we got our first look at the new Timeless format, and yeah, it's pretty wild. Lots of uh, cards from Cans of Tarkir making their way into these various decks, of course, with the fetch lands and the various Delve spells, also incredibly powerful, so I expect to see a lot of those going forward. And as far as this Tainted Pact combo is concerned, the deck feels very good, especially if you're taking this to best of three, you can easily add a few removal spells in the sideboard to help with those aggressive matchups like Mono Red, which can be a little bit tough in best of one and you can also potentially add some more counter spells or discard spells to replace your removal spells if you're up against other combo or control decks. So having a sideboard is still quite nice and even with Tainted Pact forcing us to play all one-offs it's not a huge deal since the format and card pool is large enough to give us a lot of options so I haven't really found the one-off restriction to be a huge drawback anyways. So yeah that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day.